Hello Dreamers, and welcome back to the channel. All Stars. The Unforgettables. The greatest of all times. Everything has them, from sports, video games and songs, and even roller coasters. There are a lot of All Star title worthy coasters in the world. But what if there was an All Star park? What I'm saying is, like you have an All Star basketball team, this park would be an All Star lineup of some of the best coasters around. But like an all-star basketball team, you'd need a well-rounded lineup, a one-two punch, a jack-of-all-trades, an all-star for every category. And that is what I'm gonna create today, and I'll show all of you how to do this challenge yourself. If I had an unrealistic budget and every single coaster was up for sale, which ones would be at this dream park? Before we get started on construction, only a very small margin of my viewers are actually subscribed. I would appreciate you do, as it's free and really helped out the channel against the YouTube algorithm. Anyway, if I do get something wrong, please correct me in the comments. Enjoy your ride. Let's lay out some criteria for the challenge. The goal is to construct a park with a godlike lineup of coasters. We have 15 slots for 15 different coaster types, being Giga, Hyper, Single Launch, Multi Launch, Hybrid, Spinner, Family, Indoor, Classic Wood, Modern Wood, Kitty, Invert, Unique Position, Looper, and Defunct. 15 for an all-star park isn't bad, especially with the quality of these coasters. Well, maybe 15. See, there's a catch. For each one of these categories, if I choose a coaster that fits two of the categories, say, Edge of Nika, it would take a slot of both categories. Edgenica at Fujiku Highland is a 4D wing coaster that breaks the 200 foot mark, making it eligible for the Hyper category and the Unique Position category. Instead of choosing either Hyper or Unique Position, it would fill up both slots, giving me one less coaster to work with. Without further ado, let's get started with Giga Plus. The Giga Plus category is really simple, as there are only a few coasters I can actually choose from. Anything over 300 feet or in Orion's case, anything above the 300 foot mark and drop. We won't need to worry about Orion though, as my choice is Fury 325, the B&M Giga at Carowinds. This is regarded as one of the best coasters in the world, for an amazing layout that uses energy from the 325 foot drop in an intense and fun way. Fury is also great for the challenge, as it only takes up one slot, being only the Giga. Hyper Coasters. Hypercoasters are any coaster above 200 feet tall, and here is where we get to the fun part of the challenge. From basic B&M hypers jam-packed with floater from 40 coasters like Edgenica. Now with such a large variety, it can be hard to find a good coaster that takes up only one slot. That being said, the perfect coaster for the job here is Skyrush. Skyrush at Hershey Park is an intimate hypercoaster. You won't see another coaster above 200 feet again on this list. Skyrush is an intense, airtime-filled god of a ride, and it wouldn't be an all-star lineup without it. It's a rush, and it really breaks in our lineup, providing one of the many ejector machines on this list. Single Launch The Single Launch category is a tough one to fill. A lot of modern launch coasters fall into the multi-launch category for booster launches midway through their rides. This category consists of one singular launch though, and boy I had some trouble. Eventually, though, I hit a gold mine I completely forgot about, and that's the Intimate Accelerator Coasters. The Intimate Accelerator Coasters are all singular launch coasters, but then I realized how they weren't much after the launch, and decided to go big or go home with that philosophy of just the launch. So I went with Dota Dompa. Dota Dompa is the world's fastest accelerating coaster, from 0 to 116 miles per hour in 1.6 seconds. That's face melting speeds in such a short amount of time. And then the kind people over at SNS said, Hey, that's not enough. And added a vertical loop in 2017, after the ride had been open for 17 years. This coaster is still an all-star to this day, taking the single launch spot off of my hands. Multi-launch. Here is our first dual category coaster. Moving on up from the single launch, the multi-launch is a stacked category with some of the greatest rides being multi-launches. I was tasked with the easy job of finding a multi-launch that preferably wasn't taking up multiple slots. I, I couldn't do that. 
I didn't want a single lame coaster in my park, but there's one category that's really hard to fill with a good ride. I'm not talking about multi-launches in the slightest, but I'm talking about the spinners. Spinners are really hard to fit into one category, if you want a good one, that is. I originally had this slot filled by Velocicoaster, the new Intamin Blitz coaster at Islands of Adventure. But in that scenario, I had Pandemonium in my spinner slot. Pandemoniums do not look elite, so I had to take up arguably the best category with Time Traveler, the Mock Extreme Spinner. But I'm not particularly complaining about it. Time Traveler features two LSM boosts and spinning cars. Time Traveler has been regarded as one of the best coasters of the last decade for its theming and overall wild and intense ride that's different every time due to the spinning. If I can have such a re-rideable ride in my park like Time Traveler, it's a win even if it does take up two of my slots. Hybrids. Hybrids, the RMC category. So I'll choose Excalibur. I have almost the entire RMC catalog at my disposal only excluding the Hyper Hybrids, so basically just Steel Vengeance and Zadra. I have three options that I debated here. Wicked Cyclone, a mid-sized RMC, Twisted Timbers, another mid-sized RMC, and Iron Rattler, the ride that I chose. I chose Iron Rattler for its drop and its interaction with the landscape. The elements on top of the quarry wall seem like some of the most unique elements on any RMC coaster. The first drop also seems like one of the best first drops in roller coaster history. The interaction with the quarry wall and even the water beneath. You can't go wrong with Iron Rattler, giving it the prestige of my hybrid coaster at my all-star park. Classic Wood The Classic Wood category is fairly simple. Classic Wood is any wooden coaster built before about 2000. The coaster I chose here is Phoenix, which give or take, was built about 53 years before the year 2000. I could have chosen from a lot of other great rides, like Shivering Timbers or other old great woodies, but I chose Phoenix. This is an all-star park, and I would be remiss if I didn't include one of the best wooden coasters of all time that's been around for a long time. Phoenix is a landmark coaster that really defines what real ejector is. The restraints are great, and it's a ride that multiple generations can enjoy, as it's a classic. If your family has been in the area for multiple generations, there's a good chance even your grandparents have ridden it. Modern Wood Stepping up, we have the Modern Woodies. This can be a multitude of rides from Gravity Group and GCI, but it has to be made after the year 2000. And what better modern wooden coaster would I choose than Oscar's Wacky Taxi? And what better modern wooden coaster would I choose than El Toro? El Toro is an intimate prefabricated wooden coaster, highly regarded as one of the best roller coasters of all time. And of course, it's a modern woody. I would be remiss if I didn't add it to the all-star list for just how much of an all-star it is. It's one of the highest rated coasters of all time, and I absolutely see why. The layout, the airtime, it's a masterclass in coasters, and it earns its spot here. And it only takes up one slot, so... Kitty. Of all things, this was a difficult category. What is the best kitty coaster? I have no clue. If you're playing this for yourself, you may feel very strongly on this category. And personally, I do not. So I went with Harley Quinn Crazy Train, just for how long it is. Any ride could really fit here, it doesn't really matter, but it's the vital way to train the up-and-coming enthusiasts. It just doesn't really matter to me. Family. Now here is just another case of a few things. My pick for family is usually Oscar's Wacky Taxi, the Junior Gravity Group Coaster. <sighs> I need to make a review of this ride. The thing is though, I can't choose this coaster. Our modern wood slot is already taken, so why not kill two birds with one stone? Knock out family and indoors. That's right ladies and gentlemen, I'm choosing Skull Mountain as my pick for family slash indoor coaster. Indoor is a category that you don't really choose, but one that you need to conform for. Skull Mountain is a solid family thrill coaster, with a KILLER first drop. Your butt is out of the seat the entire time, which is something enthusiasts and thrill junkies can enjoy. But the rest of the ride is much much tamer, more akin to a family coaster, making it my pick for an all-star family coaster. Invert. This is a simple category. 
There aren't really many inverts that take up multiple slots, unless you use one of the intimate impulses, which are technically multi-launches, but I didn't. I went with Montu, the B&M invert. I haven't personally ridden Montu, but from what I've heard, it's the best B&M invert, as its speed and force are unparalleled. It has a few of the same elements as other inverts, but Montu does them best, as its interaction with the ground and surrounding landscapes making it look like a killer ride. When I say unique position, I mean the positions beyond invert and sit-downs. I'm talking about wing coasters, flyers, stand-ups, and anything you want to consider unique. For this, I chose the flyers, with their strongest contender, Flying Dinosaur. Flying Dinosaur at Universal Studios Japan is one of the coasters held at highest regards, and is an all-star for this category. The inversions seem super intense, the speed ludicrous, and the lines are equally as crazy, confirming a spot on this list. This flyer is an all-star, there is no doubt about it. Looper. This is the last coaster on our list. No, I didn't forget a category, but the last two have been combined. A defunct looping coaster. There are a plethora of defunct looping coasters, but the one I chose may be surprising. I chose Drakken Fire, the defunct aero looper at Busch Gardens Williamsburg. Drakken Fire never really got all too rough from what I've heard, and the layout looks really unique for an aero looper, with a twisted drop and five inversions. It would be awesome to have a piece of history literally resurrected for my park, and Drakken Fire is just that, a lost all-star. So that's the end of construction. We are now officially open. Here, I'll show a template on screen of what coasters you'll need for your park if you want to do this challenge as well. It was really fun writing and playing, and I definitely recommend you try it. Tell me what coasters you chose in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and if you made it this far, you should probably subscribe. I'm trying to raise an army of strong-willed fellows, and if you can persist through this, you can persist through anything. So subscribe. Thanks for watching.